Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's your weekly update. If you're looking for a spooky experience, then buy your tickets now to see The Addams Family. This show is coming your way from March 19th to the 24th at the Academy of Music in Philadelphia. The show times are 7.30 to 9 p.m. and tickets are $20. Last week, a teenager driver struck by 40-year-old Miranda Thompson as she was jogging according to the Montgomery County District Attorney's Office. Authorities have said that an unidentified 18-year-old was the driver and somehow lost control of the vehicle. The teenager refused to give his phone to the police officers, so it was suspected that he was texting or talking on his cell phone. The woman was a mother of two and pronounced dead at the scene. The college is working on starting club baseball and hoping to have a full team within the next few semesters. Students from Valley Forge and Cabrini came together to discuss the details of how the club is going to run. Let's take a closer look. A group of 16 interested players met with Bruce Bride and Orland Jesperson in charge of intramural sports at Cabrini and talked about the core essentials to starting a club. You know, we talked about this spring would be kind of a probationary um, season for the club. Get up and running, we'll run some practices, we've got some Valley Forge guys that are joining us and uh, that also gives us access to the field up there which would be nice and easy for you guys, you don't have to go far. And um, it's also good for us because that gives us access to a field which is been an issue in the past. I'm hoping that you guys will step up and, and take some initiative on that because that's how club sports are structured, that you guys get that experience of leading and stepping in and filling roles. Um, and it's stuff that transfers well into careers. The club's plan right now is to have a few practices and four to six games this year, then eventually expand on the club and raise funds for fall semester of 2014 to establish themselves as a club. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin, what's new with sports? March Madness is in full swing on Cabrini's campus and there's another big game coming up this weekend. Let's take a look. Madness is in the air as the men's basketball team prepares to play in the Sweet 16 for the third straight season after defeating Ohio Wesleyan University 84-81 in the second round of the NCAA Division III tournament. The Cavs travel to the College of Wooster in the round of 16 on Saturday at 7 p.m. The men's lacrosse team rebounded from two straight losses to defeat Swarthmore on Saturday 15-7. Senior Bobby Thorpe paced the Cavs, scoring five goals and adding an assist. The Cavs have a tough week ahead, facing two more nationally ranked opponents. They battle number 10 Gettysburg College on Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. and top-ranked SUNY Cortland on Saturday at 3 p.m. The Flyers snapped a three-game losing streak by beating the Buffalo Sabres on Sunday 3-2. Simone Gagne, Max Talbot, and Claude Giroux scored in the Flyers' victory. The Flyers continue their playoff push this week with a home-and-home -home series against the New Jersey Devils starting on Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. The Phillies continue to prepare for the 2013 season in Clearwater and fell to 7-9-1 on the spring with a 10-6 loss to the Detroit Tigers. Roy Halladay struggled, allowing seven runs on six hits while walking four and striking out two in two and two-thirds innings. The Phillies are now less than three weeks away from their season opener in Atlanta on April 1st. Tune in next week to see if the Cavs could advance to the Elite Eight for the second straight season and check in on the rest of Cabrini and Philly sports. Now here's Molly with your trip across the nation. School boards in South Dakota will allow school employees or volunteers to carry guns in school under a law signed Friday by Governor Dennis Duggard. The law is set to go into effect this July. The school board can arm people to secure any physical threat to the school, students, or staff on the school premise. According to CNN, all school teachers are required to go through a training program on gun control. A very important member of the Mississippi State Police Force is recovering after being shot. It's the department's canine officer, Cora. Police said the shooter was one of their own canine officers. Although she is a little sore, Cora is making a full recovery since the shooting last Thursday. Cora was accidentally shot while officers were conducting a search warrant at a home, according to CNN. Police Chief Keith Davis said Cora is a big part of the police force. The focus now is to get Cora back on the job. 
The Frontier Airlines pilot who flew the infamous Harlem Shake flight from Colorado to San Diego was not very happy with the incident, a passenger told 10 News. Colorado Springs resident Steve Miller contacted 10 News and said he was also upset at what was happening as he sat in seat 12 days. Since 9-11, you don't do stuff like that anymore, Miller said. Miller stated that he had no other problems with Frontier Airlines in his nearly 15 years of flying with them. He said he will continue to fly the airline, but the trip to San Diego will remain one he will never forget. Wondering what you missed over break? Location got the chance to catch up with Cabrini students and athletes to hear more about what they did on their week off. Let's take a closer look to see what they were up to. Over spring break, me and a friend went to follow the boys to Virginia to see them play in the first round of the tournament. Um, it was pretty exciting. The game was insane. Like I've never been to a game like that ever. The fans were like, I, I can't even explain it. It was a close game the entire time. I guess we didn't really expect that. Um, but we spent like three days out there and we came back Sunday. I think the biggest thing I did was uh, I had an internship interview over in uh, New Jersey with uh, the Camden River Sharks uh, minor league baseball team. They're uh, looking for some interns for their season this summer and uh, I applied to uh, do some on-field PA announcing. We went to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Um, we had a lot of team bonding moments, um, and obviously we played a lot of games. Um, I don't know, I think we really came together as a team during break. Uh, we're on the men's basketball team here at Cabrini, so uh, we didn't get the spring break that everybody else had, but you know we were here practicing, and uh, we played in the NCAA tournament, so we had to travel to Ohio, and um, that was a good experience for us. We got home Sunday and then spent our entire week practicing. We went to Florida for spring break for lacrosse. A lot of team bonding. Yeah. Spent at the pool, tanning. Fun in the sun. Yep. We took a six hour bus ride down to Lynchburg. Lynchburg. Played a game. Mm -hmm. Not the best of outcomes, but we almost had him. We got him next time. We'll see him again. Yeah, we I ain't worried about it. Got on the bus for another two hours, rode down to Duke. Okay. First night, went to a great restaurant, Golden Corral. Golden Corral. That was amazing. While in spring break, me and 17 other students went abroad to Switzerland and Paris, and while we were there, we did soil and water samples, along with visiting the wine vineyards in Switzerland, we saw the Eiffel Tower in Paris, um, along with many other things. It was a really great time. That was your trip across the nation. So Christine, what's going on with entertainment? Well, my favorite bachelor, Sean Lau, is now engaged, so let me tell you about it. The finale of The Bachelor only just aired, but Sean Lau and his fiance are ready to get going to the chapel. During the finale on Monday night, it was revealed that Sean chose Catherine to be the one, and he proposed. Happy Catherine posted this picture of her engagement ring on Instagram after the proposal was announced on Monday. On the live after the final rose special, the couple was finally reunited and able to talk openly about their engagement and their future as a couple. In a surprise announcement, the couple told host Chris Harrison that they plan to have their wedding sooner rather than later, and it will be televised. Sean told the audience that he plans to work with ABC to have their wedding hosted on the network that brought them together with his new fiance. Check out Sean on this upcoming season of Dancing with the Stars, which premieres on Monday, March 18th on ABC. On Monday night, Catboard hosted a comedy club starring comedian Adam Gabrowski. Check out next week's episode of Location to see what students had to say about the show. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's check in with Nicole on the trip around the world. We have just acquired breaking news. White smoke issues from the Vatican chimney signaling that a new pope has been chosen. Venezuelan president and cancer victim Hugo Chavez died last week at age 58 from a massive heart attack, according to the head of Venezuela's presidential guard. He had been battling an undisclosed form of cancer for two years. The government had announced the previous night that a severe new respiratory infection had greatly weakened him. Now there is much uncertainty about what is going to happen. 
the top security official in Libya's capital announced Tuesday that 79 people have recently died from drinking poisonous, homemade alcohol. Mahmoud al-Sharif, security chief in Tripoli, said authorities are searching for two people believed to be involved in making the poisonous drinks. Authorities are looking into whether it was the methanol or bad fermentation that caused the large number of victims. During spring break, a group of Cabrini students were given the opportunity to travel to Guatemala for one of their classes. Let's check in with the students to hear more. Class is taught by um, Dr. Green and um, Dr. Zurich, and I think this is maybe their third or fourth year going. Well, Dr. Zurich and I have been taking students to Guatemala for, uh, this is my fourth trip. We began to talk about maybe designing a, a course that would prepare the students to the experience. A lot of um, schools don't learn about the history of a country, so they'll just go there without knowing what the people have gone through. So it's, it's good that we're learning about the history. I uh, signed up for Guatemala because I felt that it was time for me to gain a more humbling experience. Just being with the people and learning something from them, not just going there to help them. To be able to grow with them in this social justice type of way, we all kind of have this positive energy. So we're teaching them the, the skills to do advocacy, and they don't even know that they're getting this skill. I've always wanted to do like an immersion trip. All of a sudden, San Lucas is a personal thing for them. San Lucas and the issues of Guatemala or something they're passionate about. It was last minute, but I'm really glad that I did it. For Location Weekly News, I'm Heather Lapragola on Location for Location. Now back to the studio. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Be sure to stay updated with us this week by following us on our social media sites. Simply search Location News. Have a great week, Cabrini.